Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to show you a much more convenient way to sharpen your images than creating high pass layers. You see, here's the thing. When we create a high pass layer to sharpen our images, suppose you want to change the image in some way or the other. Maybe you want to increase the size, maybe you want to move it, maybe you want to apply some other effects. What happens is now that we have made a change to the image, but the high pass layer still remains the same we need to create a new high pass layer to match with that of the image, right? So we need to delete it, create a stamp visible layer, you know, add high pass to it and then overlay and all that story goes again and again. So let me show you a feature that allows you to do the same thing without being destructive like that. No matter how, how many changes you make, the high pass will adapt to it. Here's how it works, all right? So here we have an image. Let me show you first of all the disadvantage of doing the high pass thing. All right, so here we have an image and we added a little bit of contrast by using the curves adjustment layer. So this is the before, this is the after, all right? Now based on all of this, we need to apply sharpness. So how do we do that? We press Control Alt Shift E. This creates what? A stamp visible layer. On Mac that would be Command Option Shift E. Now. You can name that high pass if you're like super organization kind of person. All right. Now, if you're careful enough, we will go to filter and we will convert that to a smart filter. Hit OK so that we can change the values of high pass later. Convert for smart filter into a smart object. Now, all we need to do, go to filter, other and then high pass. We need to choose a value that accentuates the edges. So we need to zoom in not too high of a value that will create a halo effect. We don't want that to happen. So we will go to 0.1 and keep on increasing it gradually. And I think 2.5 would be a good number to be at. Hit OK. All right. And then change the blend mode to overlay. And if you want an extra step, you can also desaturate the same thing. All right. Now we have sharpened the image. Let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Here's the after. Easy, right? Now, let me show you something interesting. Suppose you want to make a change to it. So in between that, maybe you want to create a color lookup table, okay? And add something like maybe foggy night, okay? Now, as we added the foggy night, we still have sharpness in these areas, which is totally darkened by using the foggy night filter, right? Because of the high pass, we need to make changes to that again. Now, let me show you something which is worse. Let's go ahead and unlock the background layer by clicking on the lock. And if you move it or if you increase the size of her, right? Just like so. And if you move it, hit enter. Now, if you zoom in, let's have a look. The high pass texture still remains at the same place. And we need to make changes to this as well. And here lies the problem. What is the solution? Here's the solution. Let's go back to the place where it all began. Okay. Now, Instead of adding a high pass on top of that, why not attach the high pass to the same layer? And how can that be done? All right, first of all, let's unlock the background layer. Okay, then what do we need to do? We need to go to filter, convert for smart filters. We need to convert that to a smart object. Okay, do not worry. We can still paint on it. We can still remove the blemishes. You might think how it is possible. I'll show you how. All right. Now apply high pass to this. You might think, are you crazy? No, I'm not. Probably I am a little bit, but not in this case. Okay, apply the same value that you applied earlier. Hit OK. But this is all done. This is a layer in itself. Do not worry about that. All we need to do, click on this button right beside high pass. If you cannot see it, click on this arrow to show this all up and then click on this button. Double click on it. This will open up the blending options for the high pass filter. Now all we need to do, change the blend mode to overlay, the same thing. Hit OK. Now we have the high pass attached to it. Isn't that awesome? Now any changes you make to it, you enlarge it, you move it, high pass travels with it, right? So let's have a look. So this is the before, this is the after. I'm not sure whether you can see it or not, so I'm zooming super in. So this is the before before high pass and this is after high pass. Isn't that awesome? Now let me show you one more feature of this thing. Suppose you want to remove the blemishes or you want to remove the wrinkles. So instead of creating a new layer right in there and then using say the healing brush tool, we would zoom in a little bit and then 
hold the alt or option click on in sample from this area and just paint over this area just like that make sure current and below is checked so this is a way that we normally do it however there's a problem with this and the problem is this now we are sampling a sharpened skin okay we sharpen the stuff from high pass however if you turn off the high pass or change the value of the radius inside of the high pass this will still remain the same why because this is on a separate layer and it is not a smart object, right? So let me show you something which is much more visible right now. So for example, if I sample the eye and paint an eye over here, you see the eye is totally sharpened, right? If you turn off the high pass, okay? See, this eye is soft and this eye is still sharpened. So the high pass in this case is destructive. How to make it non-destructive? Well, it's super easy as well. So instead of removing blemishes, by adding layers on top of the smart object what we can do let's delete that first of all we can make changes to the smart object and how can we do that double click on the thumbnail of the smart op smart object right and zoom in and now you do all the removal of blemishes all the liquify that you want to do everything that you want to do do it right in here if you want you can convert this into a smart object as well Right, so I'll simply just create a new layer and just simply remove it just like this, probably something like that. And maybe I think it's too much. I'll go to edit, fade healing brush, and I'll fade it just a little bit. Something like this, hit okay. And work on the other side as well, just a little bit. And you know the, the whole story, right? So you can work on it. And then once you do work on it, all you have to do is go to file, and then click on save not save as save okay that gets saved once it is saved close it you see it will be updated right over here now if you want to make a change to a blemish again just double click on in it will open back in right you can zoom in make any changes to this as you want and save it save that again it will update it so it's a great way, you know, to apply sharpness to your images. One more thing that you can do here is that you can, if you want more sharpness, you can add one more high pass adjustment layer. So hold the Alt or Option, click on the high pass, hold it and drop it right over there. It just doubles it. Or you can simply go to filter other and high pass. It's the same thing. Okay. All right. Hit OK once you're done. Now you can also selectively apply it. Let's click on the right hand side, double click over there and do the same thing. Change that to overlay, hit okay. Now, if you want to only apply the sharpness on her, just on her, you are also given a mask right over here. Click on the mask of the smart filter, press Ctrl or Command I, okay? To invert the mask to black. Now black are the areas which are not shown, white are the areas which are shown. So if you paint white in the areas of her face, her face will be applied the high pass filter with, so her face will be sharpened. Select the brush and paint with white on her face. Make sure the brush is selected. Increase the size, change the mode to normal, make sure it's normal and just simply paint on her. You want the background to be like super soft the out of focus areas all right now we have very nicely sharpened her all this is great this is giving you the non-destructive option to sharpen your image you can change the value anytime it gives you a ton of options but here's a big drawback why we use the high pass method for advanced sharpening so if you're interested in very advanced sharpening selectively check this video out and here's the only con and the con is this, have a look. It gives you just one, okay? Just one mask for no matter how many high passes you add. If you want to add really advanced sharpening, for example, for the hair, you want different radius. For the eyes, you want different radius. For the freckles, you want a different radius inside of high pass. In that case, you cannot do it because you will not have separate masks for separate high passes. For example, you wanna create a high pass layer just for the hair. So you created that and you masked in just the hair. You wanna create one for just the eyes. You created one and masked in just the eyes. But here you just have one mask. So that's the only drawback of this method.
All right, so check out this video right here. It's more about advanced high pass, but if you just want to add a simple sharpening, this is a great way to do it. All right, so just as a recap, instead of adding a high pass layer, what you need to do, convert the main layer into a smart object first by going to filter and then convert for smart filters. Then we need to add high pass to it. Go to filter, other, and then high pass. Now, once you add high pass, you need to double click on the right hand side to this icon, hit OK. If that appears, it won't appear the first time. Change the blend mode to overlay. You can also select the opacity. If you think it's too sharp, you can also decrease the opacity to your liking and hit OK. All right, and you would be pretty much done applying the sharpness to your image and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.